Madam President, let me begin with a confession. I am an American. <laughs> and I come from a tradition that is very different from the wit and erudition that is so common and so expected among speakers here. So I hope you will forgive me if I speak with the vulgar directness that is common in my side of the Atlantic. <laughs> Edward Snowden broke the law. Edward Snowden committed crimes. Edward Snowden betrayed his country, his friends, his oath, and his colleagues. And he, he betrayed this country, Great Britain, as well, because your government had the misfortune to trust our government with some of its secrets. <laughs> now, there's really no debate about whether he broke the law or not, but our honorable friends on the other side say he's a hero anyway. He may have broken the law, but he's a hero because his motives were good, because um, he had a good heart, because he meant well, because the ends justify the means. You've heard that argument, the ends justify the means, many times. You've heard it from every zealot, every ideologue, every fanatic who thinks that the rules of society don't apply to them. Now, what was it that inspired Edward Snowden to break the law in this way? What did he do? What, what he discovered two things, basically, that he thought he needed, to, uh, he needed to expose. One was the NSA Metadata Project. And the NSA de Made a Data Project, as you probably know, is a program where the NSA took the phone numbers and the duration of calls of some, but not all, calls made in the United States. Now, as you know, the phone companies have all these records. Verizon has the records. So all that's happened here is that the government has the records too. But this, apparently, to Edward Snowden, was a, was a major outrage that needed to be disclosed. The second thing he disclosed was that the NSA monitors international communications, emails, phone calls, texts, and the like. That's the NSA's job. That's what the NSA is required by law to do, which is engage in international surveillance. Now, you may ask, why? Why does the NSA do this? Well, the NSA does it to protect the United States and its allies in the civilized world. It is a dangerous world out there. And there are people who want to kill us because of our freedoms. <laughs> yes. What is that? Well, yes, yes, what? One shopping center in America was blowing up every week. I would still be more four times as likely to die in my bathtub. So the NSA would be monitoring the water levels in my bathtub. No. Uh, <laughs> it's a dangerous world. 9 11, 7 7. And uh, the, the, unfortunately, Dick Cheney and company gave a bad name to the idea that the United States is responsible for protecting the national security and the international security of the civilized world. But that is the responsibility of the leaders of that world. And the NSA is part of what does it. Now, Edward Snowden didn't approve. Now, let's be clear about what Edward Snowden did. He didn't come into the, into, uh, the NSA and its contractors and discover that something unpleasant was going on. He took a job in Hawaii so that he could steal documents and release them. He betrayed his colleagues by stealing their passwords and taking the documents out. Some of those colleagues have been fired because of it, by the way. And they, uh, and then he released, uh, he released those documents uh, to, to various journalists. Um, and what, what were some of the programs that he revealed? What were these terrible secrets that he revealed? Well, he revealed that we, are, uh, that we, w that we monitor the emails, texts, and voice messages of the Taliban in the Northwest Territories of Pakistan. He, he revealed that we monitor the emails of the mullahs in Iran. In, in Iran. He revealed that we uh, tap certain computers in Hong Kong and China. Are these outrages? No, they are good things that the government does. It is important that we do these things, but the government 
Uh, but uh, uh, Edward Snowden thinks they were uh, thinks they were bad, so they were. Uh, th they have now been blown, and it is no longer possible to um, no longer possible for the government to continue those particular programs. Let us hear nothing tonight about the tradition of civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is an honorable tradition in your country and mine because. Uh, these are people who step up and take consequences for their actions. Edward Snowden did not engage in civil disobedience because, as you know, Edward Snowden did not accept consequences. He fled. He fled. And where, where did Edward Snowden go? He went to Hong Kong first, which is under the supervision of China, and then he went to Russia. This hero of free speech, this hero of civil liberties, went to authoritarian regimes who have no regard for these secrets. Yes, please. If you think that freedom of speech I would put the record of civil liberties of Russia against uh, Britain and the U.S. In, in, in very comfortable in that distinction. Now, Edward Snowden also took his laptops to China and to Russia. And you should ask yourself, before you decide whether Edward Snowden's a hero, whether Russia and Chinese intelligence <laughs> inhaled all the data on those computers during the many months he's been in these countries. And you should ask yourself, whether the world is safer, whether the world is better off with Russia and China knowing the 1.7 million documents apparently that Edward Snowden took. It is a disgrace that someone who claims to be fighting for civil liberties exposed secrets in that way to those people. Yes, sir. <laughs> One thing I wanted to bring up was, it's been increasingly found that what the uh, NSA was doing with regards to metadata was grossly unconstitutional. So how can you say that Edward Snowden's not a patriot to the Constitution if he's exposing a flagrant breach of it? You know, Fifteen judges have upheld the NSA metadata program. One has found it unconstitutional, and this is now before the courts. We have systems in the United States. There are ways to respond, to, to bring uh, challenges. Edward Snowden could have gone to the members of Congress. Edward Snowden could have gone to an inspector general within uh, the NSA, but he didn't. He went to Glenn Greenwald instead, and that is not an appropriate use of classified information. May I just conclude by saying it is especially fitting that we have a discussion of treachery and betrayal at a great English university. But unfortunately, we are not at the correct uh, great English university to have a discussion of betrayal and treachery. We should be, of course, at the other place. We should be at Cambridge. Because, ca yes, sir. Yes? It's not a great English university. Oh, OK. We should be at an adequate university, <laughs> Cambridge, because Cambridge was the place last, in the last century when a group of students were similarly idealistic, similarly convinced of their own rectitude, and similarly disregarded the rule of law. Philby, McLean, Burgess, well-intentioned, all of them. And where did they go? They all went to Moscow, where Edward Snowden rests tonight. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Ladies and gentlemen, Edward, Kim Philby is no hero, was no hero, and Edward Snowden isn't a hero either. Thank you very much.